Good morning. Welcome to Wesley Church. I'm glad you could join us today. I hope you had the opportunity to read the scripture today from Psalm 139, verses 1 through 16, and then again 23 through 24. I'm going to start today with a summary of the first half of the psalm, uh, in that uh, this the particular psalm just lends itself very nicely to a um, a modern day kind of a, of a translation. So let me uh, summarize the first half of the psalm, and then later I'll summarize the second half. I have to be honest, God. At first, I was totally freaked out. You know me better than anyone, by far, and I just don't know how to feel about that. Sometimes I feel like you're my truant officer, who just frisked me and found something illegal on my person. Other times I feel like I'm in a hospital bed with one of those sensors on it, and you know every time that I get up. Or like we're twins, and you can read my mind, only I can't read your mind. Or you're like a spouse that knows every indiscretion, that you know every, uh, all of my comings and goings. Sometimes I even feel micromanaged, as they say, and I don't like it. There's no point in me telling you what I think about, because you already know my thoughts. Sometimes I would like to be alone or just do what I feel is right, but I can't. I realize that I'm really more like a sheep in a pen or a dog on a leash, completely dependent on you. Where can I go to be alone for a moment? Nowhere. I could go from one end of the planet to another and you'd be right there calling me back. I could even go over to the dark side, as they say. Join the atheists and you'd be right there to save me from myself. That's the end of my Summary, the first half of Psalm 139, and I have an essential question for you as you listen and you think about today's message. Are you comfortable with someone knowing everything about you? In today's passage, Psalm 139 says that we might as well get used to being known intimately. Remember that David was not a perfect person, so the thought that God knew his secrets, all of his secrets, namely the story of Bathsheba, remember that, and her husband, Uriah. It would have been very disconcerting for David to know that God knew these things. And in the 12, first, uh, 12 verses of this psalm, we read about what it feels like to be completely known and laid open and exposed before God. It seems as though David is not entirely comfortable with being known so personally, Perhaps it's a bit unsettling to be laid bare like that, transparent before God, naked and in full view. Job is another character in the Bible who has similar feelings that we read about from the psalm today, about uh, uh, the experience of God knowing him so well and thinking that God is judging him. Job didn't like it any better than David. And he said this, For you, God, write down bitter things against me, and make me reap the sins of my youth. You fasten my feet in shackles. You keep close watch on all my paths by putting marks on the soles of my feet. Have you ever felt like that? Like God was tracking you, knew exactly where you were going and all of the sins that you've committed? This reminds me of a story uh, from my childhood. There was a fire alarm on a telephone pole back in those days across the street from my house. We lived in Baltimore City. And in case of a fire emergency, you were supposed to break the glass and pull down the little lever, pull down the handle to call the authorities. The only thing was that the handle was covered in blue ink to keep people, discourage them from pulling false alarms. Well, another kid in our neighborhood, his name was Mark, he didn't know about the ink. And so, uh, uh, for fun, he pulled the false alarm one day. Having nowhere else to wipe the ink, he wiped it on the sole of his shoe and then walked slowly home. When the fire truck arrived, it was very easy for them to track him down by the footsteps of blue ink leading to his house, which is what Job accused God of doing. 
in that passage, and David too in the psalm. For David and Job and others, God's omniscience, or God's knowing everything, took some getting used to, and it was very uncomfortable at first for them. But then in the second half of the psalm, something happens. David has already made it painfully clear the downside of God knowing him so well, but then he changes his tune in the second half. There's a development, kind of a maturing maybe, in David's feelings about being known. He begins this second half by praising God for creating him. He says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. What a wonderful image, a beautiful image of the creative process as God knits a baby together in its mother's womb. David starts thinking about God's intimate, warm, creative knowledge above and beyond the uncomfortable knowledge. David becomes aware of the depth of his need to be known. So here's my summary of part two of uh, Psalm 139. Actually, now that I have some time to think about it, God, I realize that comparing our relationship with a human one just doesn't help because you are so much greater than any human being that I know. You are the one who created me, and I can't say that about anyone else. And that's the reason why you know me so well. You probably have a journal up there in heaven with all of my days lovingly documented, one after the other. Now, I'm starting to think that being known by you, my creator, isn't so bad. You know everything about me, yes, But you know about everyone and everything in the universe, and you tenderly preserve this knowledge for everyone's benefit. You keep tabs on us because you love us, not because you want to catch us in our crimes or our sins, not because you want to micromanage our lives. Now that I trust your intentions, I'd like to ask what you think of me. I welcome your scrutiny. Go ahead and search me and know me and let me know how I can be a better person. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting, he says. Being fully exposed to God, though intimidating to David at first, becomes his greatest joy. Psychologists say that one of our most basic needs as human beings is to be known and loved unconditionally. What they don't tell us is that human beings cannot provide this level of unconditional love. Personally, I have tried and failed many times at providing unconditional love to my family members. It doesn't come easily to any of us. Once I hear about a person's deep, dark secrets, I am much more likely to judge that person accordingly. Now, here's an example, uh, not a family member, but I became friends with a homeless man in Harrisburg at my last church. Rumors started spreading around in the homeless, uh, among the homeless population that this man was not who he said he was. And then a couple of my staff in the church office did a little investigation and found that this new friend of mine was wanted in another state for child abuse. If I had known this information... I would not have become his friend in the first place because my love, my care, was not unconditional. Even though that is an extreme example, we all have a deep-seated need to be known fully and then to be loved in spite of our crimes. What is it that we are hiding? What is it about ourselves that we do not want others to know about? Because we all have stuff that we're hiding, maybe not as severe as the man I was telling you about. But we all have so-called skeletons in the closet, things that we don't want anyone to remind us of. The Bible says that God knows us very well, inside and out, that you can't hide anything from the Holy Spirit. On the one hand, this gives me great comfort, knowing that someone knows everything about me and loves me, Anyway, but on the other hand, this same truth makes me squirm a little bit. Sometimes I wish I could keep some secrets from God. 
Our big idea for today, my one point that I'd like to make that I hope that you take with you today is this. Seek God's scrutiny of your life as no human being knows you as well and loves you unconditionally anyway. So how do we seek God's scrutiny? Well, the best way that I can think of is simply with this verse from this passage today. Sometimes a Bible verse is just what we need in order to make a life change. And this is verses 23 and 24 of Psalm 139. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and then lead me in the way everlasting. Being exposed before uh, by God may feel uncomfortable ex- at first, but it can quickly become our greatest joy. To Kill a Mockingbird is a book written by Harper Lee. Back in It was written back in 1960. It was about the Finch family who lived in the Deep South. Atticus Finch was the father figure, and he explains to Scout, his daughter, what it means to know someone. And he says that the only way to really get to know someone is to stand inside their shoes, to stand where they stand for a while, to see things from their perspective. That's what it means to know someone. And the good news is that that's exactly what Jesus did. He was God come to earth to stand in our shoes for 33 years. And for what purpose? Well, one of the purposes was to get to know us on an intimate, personal, and fully human level. That is indeed the basis of the incarnation that God became man and walked among us. That is the good news. And some of us are probably missing out on the best part of what it means to be a Christian. If you are still embarrassed about your true self, if you're still hiding things, or hiding behind a false image of who you are, as perfect, for example. If you're still overwhelmed by your past and unconfessed crimes or sins, as we say, let me tell you about the good news. You don't have to worry anymore. As Christians, we know that the gospel is about forgiveness for past sins, the Holy Spirit's wisdom for today, and the hope everlasting into the future. Not only does God know you intimately, but God loves you unconditionally nonetheless. That's the good news for today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes we feel intimidated by your deep knowledge of us. We have secrets that we don't want anyone to know. We'd like to believe that at least our thoughts are ours and ours alone. It's much easier to be clean on the outside than on the inside to do the right thing than always be thinking the right thing. Forgive us for this and cleanse us from the outside in and from the inside out. Together with the psalmist, we ask you, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. And Amen.